So I was just taking a little stroll through my garden and I happened to notice a whole bunch of small little bite marks and holes in a number of the leaves all throughout the garden. And so in today's video, what I wanna walk through are five steps for identifying and then managing cabbage moths and cabbage worms in the garden. Now, as we get started here, if you have any questions whatsoever, just leave those down in the comments. I start every one of my days having a cup of coffee, sitting on the couch and answering every question that we receive on YouTube. So you're gonna get a response from me super quickly. Now, as is the case with all pests and all diseases, we don't wanna be jumping directly into actions and conclusions, but rather we first wanna take a little bit of a step back and utilize the five steps of integrated pest management. And the very first step is always identification. And so with cabbage moths and worms, the first telltale sign that we're looking for are small bite marks and holes in the leaves on our plants. And this is primarily going to be on our brassicas, such as broccoli, cabbage, cauliflower, or our kale plants. Now I'm gonna explain where those holes come from in just a second, but as we notice those holes on our leaves, we also want to take note to see whether or not we are spotting any dried up slime. And if we do, that means that we could actually be dealing with a slug instead of a cabbage worm. And so on these leaves that I'm looking at right now, I'm not spotting any slime whatsoever, which is kind of an indicator that it's probably a cabbage worm that I'm dealing with but there's more things that we can be taking into account to further confirm this. So where did these holes come from? So what actually happens in this instance is that a cabbage moth is that small white moth that you probably have seen flying around in your backyard. And what it does is it lands on the backside of a leaf. And once it's on that leaf, it's leaving a small little white egg on there. And after some time, that small little white egg ultimately hatches and turns into a small green cabbage worm. And it's these cabbage worms that then utilize the leaves as their food source. So they're the ones that are putting the chomp marks into it. So as you do your inspections, now as you see those little holes, also take note as to whether or not you're seeing any little white eggs or any little green cabbage worms. And in this particular instance, I'm finding both of those. So I know that I am indeed working with cabbage moths and cabbage worms and therefore I can move now into step two which is evaluation and so when it comes to evaluation we want to count up the number of worms and eggs that we find on a particular set of plants and all that you're doing is going from one leaf to the next counting how many eggs you can find and how many small green cabbage worms you can find you wanna make note of that somewhere in a journal so that you can use that as a benchmark to see whether or not the actions that you end up taking are being effective in ultimately decreasing the number of cabbage worms that are living throughout your garden. And so once you've completed your evaluation and you know how many eggs, how many worms are kind of spread throughout the plants there, we're all set to move on to step number three, which is tolerance. And this is a really important one because it's going to inform how severe the actions are that we take. And so what you want to do is spend a couple of minutes just thinking through, do you wanna have absolutely zero holes on your leaves whatsoever? Are you okay with there being a few holes sprinkled throughout? Are you okay with the leaves being completely ravished? The answer to this question and the tolerance level for each of us is ultimately going to vary. And therefore the actions that we're each going to take might be a little bit different as well. So my personal tolerance level is that I'm totally okay having some holes in the leaves on my plants, even if that means that I'm eating leaves that have some holes in them. But this is going to vary for each and every one of us. So do spend a couple of minutes determining what your tolerance level is. And once you've done that, we're all set to move on to step number four, which is actions. And I'm gonna take us through two actions and they're really the only two actions that you need to be taking in order to be managing cabbage moths and cabbage worms in your garden. But just before we do that, for those of you that I have not met before, I'm Jordan from Mind and Soil, where we're looking to introduce a million individuals to gardening's mental health benefits. So if you're looking for more peacefulness, more joy, more restoration in your life, then I really encourage you to subscribe to our channel here because we put out new videos every single week just like this one to be taking as much of the guesswork out of gardening as possible so that you can be spending all of your time just getting your hands dirty and feeling how good it is to be in the garden. So with that being said, the first of the two actions is simply to manually remove them. And so to do this, all that we need to do is go back to the plants that we were just inspecting, 
flip the leaves over so that we're looking at the backside where those little white eggs and green worms are living. And then as you come across them, you can either try to remove them or simply squish them on the plant there. And then you simply move from one plant to the next, inspecting each of the leaves on it to make sure that you're getting all of them. And then you're gonna to wanna to repeat this process every two to three days and be writing down in your journal the number of eggs and worms that you're coming across and it should begin to be decreasing, which is giving your plants the best likelihood of thriving. Now, if you don't wanna be inspecting all of those leaves every two to three days, Days, then you can take a more proactive approach in the form of using floating row cover. And so my friend Maggie at Soil to Soul, she does an amazing job of this on her farm and sent me a couple of videos of her setup. And so what she's got going on here is floating row covers that she's put over top of each of her leafy greens and brassicas. And what this is doing is creating a physical barrier that is physically preventing that cabbage moth from even being able to access the leaves where they would then be trying to leave that egg. So by utilizing a floating row cover, you're effectively making it impossible for the cabbage moth to ultimately land in your yard. And what's probably gonna happen is that they'll just putter along to the next house or the next property where there's likely to be some leafy greens that they can call home and leave their eggs there. So floating row cover is another really great option. And so I'm gonna share with you my personal approach to managing cabbage moths in my garden in just a second. But that fifth and final step that we wanna be carrying out is monitoring. And all that we're doing on this front is every two to three days, going back out to where we saw the problem originally and counting up the number of eggs and worms that we're coming across and recording that in our journal. And all that we're hoping to accomplish here is get that number down to below our tolerance level. Once we've done that, then we now know that we've managed this problem successfully and the actions that we've been taking have indeed been working. So how do I go about managing cabbage moths in my garden? Well, beginning with my tolerance level, I'm totally okay with there being some holes on my plants. And I just kind of understand that's gonna be part of the process here. And on top of that, I love spending 10 to 15 minutes just kind of pitter pattering throughout the garden, looking at the back of the leaves and then squishing any of the little eggs or the little worms that I come across. And just by doing that without even using any floating row cover for the size of garden that I have, I find that it is sufficient for staying within that tolerance level that I have for my plants. So I know that if you utilize the five steps of integrated pest management, plus those two particular actions for cabbage moths and cabbage worms, you're gonna totally have them under control in your garden this season and get all kinds of beautiful brassicas and leafy greens out of your garden. If you do have any questions, leave those down in the comments. Other than that, I can't wait to catch you in the next video. Go get those hands dirty and I'll see you soon.